And here now to give us more inside is Julie Blake, Senior Counsel for Alliance Defending Freedom, which filed the Mifa Pristone case. Julie, good to be with you. Uh, first off, your reaction to the ruling and how significant is it? Well, the FDA has a responsibility to protect the health, the safety, and welfare of all Americans. But it's failed that responsibility when it comes to chemical abortion drugs. These drugs are dangerous. They should never have been approved in the first place. And we are so pleased that the Court of Appeals yesterday ruled that safeguards have got to be put back in place on these chemical abortion drugs. Julie, talk to us, uh, you know, about what is at the heart of this case when it comes to women's health and safety and the danger this abortion pill potentially poses. Well, chemical abortion drugs are dangerous. As the court recognized yesterday, thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of women have been hurt from complications from chemical abortion drugs. These complications can involve life-threatening bleeding, infections, and the inability to have a future successful pregnancy. The victory that the court gave yesterday is to tell the FDA that it should impose basic safeguards on these drugs use, such as doctor visits, having um, the limits on the gestational age um, so that they're not taken so far in pregnancy that they pose a serious risk of danger um, and the danger gets worse, worse every week. And so we're thrilled that the court recognized those safeguards. But what the FDA really should do is put politics aside, follow the science, and realize that these drugs were too dangerous to be approved in the first place under any conditions. Yeah, and I know it's just not physical health, too. I mean, also a, a woman's mental and emotional well-being is at risk by taking these drugs. Talk to us about that. You know, countless women across the country have been utterly unprepared for what happens when they take chemical abortion drugs. The Biden administration, the FDA, allows these drugs to be dispensed online, by mail, no doctor visits required, not even a doctor on the other end of a, of a form on the internet. And so many women are just completely unprepared for the physical and the psychological cost of what happens when they take a chemical abortion drug, they go into labor at home, maybe in the bathroom at work, and then they experience an abortion alone, on their own, with no doctor or anyone else there to help and care for them. Women and girls deserve better than the trauma of these chemical abortion drugs. Yeah, and Julie, another thing I want to bring up, too, I mean, this drug, uh, if delivered by mail, really means anybody can get it. So say if a crime is being committed, like sex trafficking or sexual abuse, I mean, that may never come to light. And that is why yesterday's decision is so important. Basic safeguards on chemical abortion drugs should include having an office visit, having a doctor there. And that way a doctor can do an important screening to make sure that the woman isn't being coerced by a boyfriend, by a sex trafficker, into having an abortion against her will. So this really is an important safeguard to protect women from having an abortion that she doesn't even want to have. Yeah, and the decision brings with it uh, certain specifications around access and usage of mifepristone. Talk to us a little bit more about that. Well, the decision says that the FDA failed to follow the science, the studies, to show that these drugs were safe without safeguards. And so the court said that under the FDA's own science, they never had the authority to approve these drugs beyond seven weeks of pregnancy. They never had evidence to show it was safe without a doctor. They never had evidence to show it was safe without a medical exam. And in fact, that they never had evidence in the first place about the dangers of chemical abortion drugs. The FDA told doctors, told drug companies, don't bother reporting complications unless a woman dies. And then the FDA turned around and told the courts, well, hey, look, we've got we've got no evidence these drugs are dangerous. We don't have any reports of harm. And, and the court simply said that that was, was not going to fly. Uh, if you have any form of reasoned decision making, you can't tell people not to submit evidence and then claim there's a lack of evidence of harm. And so that's one of the really encouraging parts of the decision, that it's time to finally study and see the harms that our clients, emergency room doctors, are seeing all the time in practice when women get these drugs online. Julie, we have about 30 seconds left or so, but tell us what comes next. Well, the Biden administration intends to take this case to the U.S. Supreme Court, and what we are going to do at Alliance Defending Freedom is continuing to stand for the health and safety of women and girls, and the FDA should do the same. And Julie, we're gonna leave it right there. Thank you so much, and we're gonna continue to follow this. God bless. Thank you.